NIL and transfer portal has affected college basketball so much being focused on the world of college football, the SEC and the Big Ten getting together, saying we're going to have an advisory committee on so many of these subject matters. So how do you see it hitting the college basketball world, Jay? Well, I I think it's going to do the same thing it's done in football. I mean, the transfer portal has meant that big shot players that are playing on a lower level, uh, maybe mid-major or below, are transferring up. And uh, the, uh, one of the best examples of that is Dalton Connect at, uh, at Tennessee. Uh, he was at Northern Colorado. And the truth is, Rich, I saw him play two, maybe three times. And the reason I did was I was watching uh, the game because there was an NBA prospect playing on the other team. And that's how I saw Dalton Connect. Uh, I wouldn't have seen him otherwise. So he transfers to Tennessee. He's the best player in the league. And he's going to be a a lottery pick uh, in this year's NBA draft. Uh, And there are a number of stories like that where uh, these players who are under-recruited out of high school, went to a mid-major, have transferred to major college teams, power five, power six teams, and they're their leading scorers. They're great players. Uh, And we're seeing that more and more. And in today's landscape, you know, you hear the coaches at a mid-major level saying, look, we invested all this in this player, and the player gets really good, and then he leaves. Well, isn't that what coaches do at the mid-major level? They win and then they, you know, of course they do and they should. Um, Why should a player be relegated to a certain level based upon where he was projected out of high school? Uh, So that's, that's helped. And you've seen major conference players that didn't play as much go down to the mid-major level and they're doing really well. Um, So it's, I think it's been overall a good thing for the players Coaches don't like it because they, they claim, you know, you, you always hear the thing about, well, there's no loyalty anymore. And it's transactional as if it wasn't transactional before. And how do you build relationships? You know, you, you think all these guys should go coach in high school if they want relationships. Um, it's business. And the players are participating in the business now. And, uh, and I think it's worked out just fine. Well, we're seeing in college football, Jay, um, Chip Kelly just left – UCLA as the head coach of UCLA to take a gig to be an OC at Ohio State after knocking on the door of the NFL to become an offensive coordinator. We saw Boston College's head coach leave to be a defensive coordinator in Green Bay. And and the general sense is that they went from one form of football uh, where there are fewer rules to the pros, where there are more rules as to where you can um, have a free agent or when you can have a free agent and and that it, it seems to be an easier gig in the pros. I'm wondering if you're hearing that from college coaches as well. You're hearing it as an excuse. Uh, my thing is, hey, if you want to if you want to leave your job, go ahead. If players getting paid is so difficult for you to wrap your head around, then go. I mean, nothing's stopping you. Go ahead. I mean, I don't know the Chip Kelly Chip Kelly situation at UCLA. Did he leave before he was pushed, or was he leaving because of NIL? I think it was a little bit of both, Jay. I mean, I and 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 it's not just. I don't think they have a problem with kids getting paid. I think they just have a problem with with kids being told it's an inducement. You understand how NIL wasn't supposed to be really an inducement. And then there's really no rules. Like a kid could be told, hey, you can get paid this. And then somebody uh, comes in in a transfer portal. That kid then doesn't get paid. He doesn't get the job he was promised and things of that nature. And that there's really no rules around how, how you pay the kids and, and, and when a kid can actually leave. And they're having some issues with that. And that's why there's commissions being formed on this subject. That's matter. fine. That's fine. And good luck with it. But the, the solution is simple. And the NCAA and the member institutions just don't want to do it. The, the, the solution is sign the players to contracts. They're employees, and you can sign them to a contract and put a buyout in it if you want, just like with coaches. I mean, the Boston College coach left to go to the NFL. First of all, he had NFL ties before that. He was in the NFL before he went to Boston College. But, but then you saw somebody leave from the NFL to go to Boston College. So what does that say? Um, it, it, th- this to me is just, you know, kind of, and I love all these coaches, but it's just more coach complaining. 
Um, they're making a ton of money. Things have changed. Adjust to it. And it's not that big of a deal. But if the NCAA wants to fix this, they can fix it tomorrow. All they have to do is take off all restrictions for schools paying their athletes, and they would sign them to contracts just like they do coaches and administrators and all that. It's really not that difficult. But we're trying to walk the line of maintaining amateurism, which is dead. And then we're complaining about NIL. It's not what we thought it was going to be. What did they think was going to happen? You know, it, like I knew this was going to happen and you and I talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the schools want to pay the players. They want to have the best players and they're going to do what it takes to get them and they're going to compete in the marketplace to do it. And once players are allowed to be paid by you know, in this unilateral wage restriction that the NCAA is using, which is violative of federal antitrust law, uh, things will normalize. And it, it, we won't have to worry about the transfer portal. You sign a player to a contract, put a buyout in it, put conditions in it that are bargained between the player and the institution. It won't be a problem anymore. Uh, just like they don't worry about coaches transferring from one school to another. They pay their buyout. It's orderly. And everybody knows what the market is. It's just not that big of a deal. And, Rich, the NCAA has got a freight train coming down the tracks right at it. And uh, it's called the House case, and it's being uh, it's being litigated by a lawyer named Jeffrey Kessler, who oh, won oh the boy. Austin case. Yes. And and that's for damages for um, uh, TV revenues and the like. So the NCAA is looking at a judgment in that case of, of four or five billion dollars. And uh, and that means their rules are going to be tossed out as well. So they're going to do this. It's just a question of whether they're forced to do it by the courts, whether they're forced to do it by state and federal legislation. But their only hope right now is to, and they're spending a ton of money doing it, they're lobbying Congress to get an antitrust exemption so they can continue doing what they've been doing, which the courts have said is illegal. The Supreme Court said, you know, the NCAA is not above federal antitrust law. And that was a pretty clear signal that, that it's over and they don't, they don't want to admit it. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.